Hey everybody, I'd like to welcome you to this third video in our sponsored series in partnership with JetBrains Sea Lion. Today, I'm really excited to talk about JetBrains AI Assistant. It's an amazing feature that has completely changed how I approach development. And in this video, I'm gonna show you three ways why JetBrains AI has become an indispensable tool for me, especially as a person who's continually seeking to improve my C++ skills. Before we dive in, I wanted to announce that a new version of C-Line is now available. Some highlights include performance improvements using C-Line Nova, a new OpenCV image viewer, debug server support for embedded and remote development, and more. Check out details using the link in the video description below. And now, here's a quick message from our sponsor. Here we are in C-Lion. One difference in this video is that I'm now using C-Lion Nova. This is a brand new language engine that improves memory usage, response time, and indexing. To update from the classic engine to this new and improved C-Lion Nova engine, what you need to do is download the latest version of C-Lion, then go up here to the top right in the settings, and then down here at the very bottom is an option where you can switch back and forth between this classic engine and the new and improved Sea Lion Nova engine. Let's talk about JetBrains AI Assistant. This plugin transparently connects you with a number of large language models to provide you with a seamless experience right here in C Line. You can use it to generate code, tests, commit messages, documentation, and more. To activate the assistant, First, you need to sign up for JetBrains AI on the website. Once you've done this, then you can activate the assistant by going up here to the top left to settings, then go here and search for plugins. And here you would enable the JetBrains AI assistant. Once you've hit okay, then you can go to the assistant over here on the right hand side. Now there are a couple of nice things that you can do with this AI assistant right away. One thing that you'll notice is down here at the very bottom, you can add source files so that the AI assistant knows contextual information about what source files that you're talking about. So right now I'm in this file called scratchcore.cpp and I've added this to the list of source files that it can gather information from. If you want to look at all the features that you can get from this AI assistant, you can go here to this all features link, and this will give you a list of many of the things that you can do with the AI assistant. Another thing that you can do is if you want to pull this out and put this on another screen or put this over here in another place, you can do that as well. To return it back to where it's linked with the IDE, you just dock it here using this button here on the top right. Now let's have a little bit of fun. This project is one that I've been working on for a few years now, and it's quite a large scale project. And let's say that I didn't know anything about this source file, and that I just wanted an explanation of what was happening here. I could go to the assistant and say, can you tell me what's happening in this source file. And then what it does here is it gives us the entire breakdown of what's happening within this source file. So it's still going. I could probably take this class and break it down a little bit more into some subclasses, but just to give you an idea. Uh, it gives you an overall purpose for managing and processing audio for the application. Uh, it shows you what happens within each one of the functions. Gives you um, just some different details about what's happening. And let's say that I said something like, can you give me five improvements for that? I can make in this class. 
then what it'll do is it can actually give me some suggestions on some ways that I can actually improve this class as well. Another thing that I like about this AI assistant is the way that it can help me squash bugs without needing to bring up the entire AI assistant here in this separate panel. So here in this file, I have a couple warnings. And if I go ahead and just click on that, we'll see that the first warning here I have is for a function that says not all control paths return a value. If I double click on this warning it'll bring me directly to the function and just to abstract this out we see that we have this function that's supposed to return a float we have an if statement but we don't have any type of else statement or alternative return path so we see here that what i've done is i've just put my cursor over this part and it has suggested that i create a return path for this. And I could just go ahead and hit tab to do that. And that would solve it that way. Another way that we could do this is we could highlight the function. And then what I would do is press command backslash and it brings up the AI assistant in line. I really like this because it's quite convenient, especially if you have limited screen space. And I can say, can you fix the warning on this function without even telling it what the warning is. Now it's going to go to this code generation and this code generation does take a second to happen, but we'll see that it's going to rewrite the function with the return path. So here we go. It's writing this and now it's added this code with the return path, it's highlighted this in green and I can accept this or discard it. So that's quite nice. Now let's say that I wanted to add some type of assertion if this dynamic cast fails. So I can add a follow-up message that says, can you please add an assertion if the dynamic cast fails? And now what we see is that it's going to rewrite the function and it will add the assertion as well. And I can just accept this in line. So now we have our rewritten function. Now let's say that I wanted to add a little bit of documentation to this. What I could do is I could right click and there's also this AI actions panel here in the right click uh, where I can get the uh, assistant to explain the code. I can suggest refactoring. I can also get it to write documentation. So what I can do is click that. And now it's going to write some documentation for me. And there we go. Now it's written a uh, doxy comment for me. And as we can see, this is a very handy way that we can uh, use this to quickly go and squash bugs, squash warnings, and so on. So now we still have one more warning that we can squash out. And what I can do is I can actually hover over this and we see that the warning says member function can be made cost. So I can just click on this to actually fix this. And now we have a function that has documentation, has an assert if this dynamic cast fails, and has a return path if uh, the dynamic cast fails as well. So now let's say that I want to commit this. Another thing that I really like about the JetBrains AI Assistant is that it can help us create commit messages. So inside the JetBrains IDE, I can go here to this commit section up here on the top left. And now I see that there have been modifications that have been made to scratch core.cpp and scratch core.h. I can just go ahead and click those. Then down here at the bottom, we have the AI assistant that can help us create the commit message. So I'm going to go ahead and hit generate commit message. And now it's gone and it has created a commit message to me. And what I could do is I could go ahead and hit commit. 
and now the change is committed onto our repository. So it's very handy for documentation, for helping us to zap out warnings, helping us to get understanding of what code is doing, and also helping us to create commit messages for our repository. And there you have it. As you've seen, JetBrains AI is packed with features designed to save you time and to make your development process smoother. From explaining and refactoring code to generating tests and documentation, it's definitely a tool that every developer should have in their toolkit. If you'd like to learn more about JetBrains AI or see C-Line in action, check out the link below. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy coding. See you next time.